So last year I did over 100 videos and live streams. So I thought it would be a cool idea to kick off the year talking about how to find your voice as a creative. I think the first thing we need to address is the fact that finding your voice, finding a way to express yourself creatively is not something you achieve once and for all. For most artists, be it somebody who paints, somebody who does music, music production, video, it's a process, it's something ongoing. So it's good to keep that in mind that Finding your voice, finding your way to express yourself creatively is a process. If you look at somebody like, for example, Bob Dylan, you can see going through different phases in his creative output. And he's not the same person creatively when he started as he is now. And it's important to note that it's not about shaping yourself to your audience. That's not the main point. It's not about adapting, but rather it's adapting your output to your emotions, feelings, and desires, so that there is a sort of balance between what you output and what you actually desire. And I think that's the complicated part. Now, why is it the case that it's a process, that it's something that changes over time? Well, one way to look at it is to look at it as congruence. Basically, you have your feelings, desires, the things that you pour into your creative process. And then you have what you're actually doing. In order for you to feel creatively fulfilled, there has to be a congruence of these two aspects. And if those two circles are too far apart, you won't actually feel good. You won't feel content. You won't feel like you achieved the stuff that you want to achieve in your life. So there has to be congruence between your desires, the goals, the things you aspire to, and what you're actually doing. Before we go any further, I just want to touch on where I'm getting this from. I'm uh, drawing quite loosely from the ideas of humanistic psychologist Carl Rogers and his idea of authentic self. To quote one source, Rogers believed that every person could achieve their goal. This means that the person is in touch with the here and now, his or her subjective experience and feelings, continually growing and changing. In many ways, Rogers regarded the fully functioning person as an ideal and one that people do not ultimately achieve. It is wrong to think of this as an end or completion of life's journey, rather it is a process of always becoming and changing. And while we as humans we strive for this sort of balance between our desires, feelings, motives and goals and the actual output, we also benefit from being incongruent at times, especially as artists, because as an artist you need new creative fuel. We need to have new experiences that shakes us because we need to get rattled. And I think this is a part of being a creative. You're experiencing new things, you get rattled, you get shaken up. Your desires, goals, uh, feelings, they change by these new experiences. And therefore your output has to change. Maybe you have a religious experience and you want to output that somehow. Or you see something in the world, some injustice or some problem and it changes what you want to output. And I think that this is one of the major reasons why being a creative is such an up and down roller coaster. I mean, you can have a set goal, but that goal will almost always change over time because your feelings and desires change. So therefore your output has to change because we can't live in this incongruent state for, for too long. And I think this explains why it's very hard to be truly creative if you're too controlling. Now there's of course many different types of control, but if you are too controlled as a person, if you're too rigid, it becomes very hard to change the way that you output something in relation to certain feelings, emotions and desires, because you will have this very narrow frame of this little box of how things should be outputted. It can be very hard to, to fit your creativity into that small box. So instead you need to be flexible, you need to be able to improvise, I think, to use a very tired phrase, but be able to sort of go with the flow sometimes and, and kind of let your guard down, let yourself experience things and just go from there. 
So looking back at the last year, even though I made over a hundred videos and live streams, I can see that, you know, it goes up and down for me as well. Sometimes I manage to take what's inside of me, my desires, my goals, my feelings, my aspirations, and output it into something that is meaningful and that I can be proud of. But that's not always the case. I fail, you will fail as well, and that's just part of it. It's part of the process, part of your development. And as time goes by, you will learn what works for you, what makes you tick. And I think that's very important, to give yourself that time uh, to experiment, to try things out, and see what sort of resonates with you. Because honestly, if there's anything I've learned from YouTube is that if it resonates with me, if it truly resonates with me, it will resonate with somebody out there. And I think that's the brilliant part about YouTube. It's so direct. I can get instant feedback if I managed to take something from within me and deliver it to you. And it resonated somehow. And this brings me to another point, something that I learned over the last year. And that is that in order to be congruent, to reach a state where you feel like your creative output matches the creative input, if you will, you actually have to persevere. Basically, you just have to have a lot of creative experience, both good and bad, both situations where you achieved something, where it feels really good, but also situations where it feels really, really bad. And this is something which sets a creative profession apart from many other professions. There are many professions where the highs and lows are not so high or low. The, the, the difference is not so great. I can remember working, for example, as a, as a psychotherapist. Of course, you'd have bad days and you'd have good days, but because you're in a, such a professional mindset and you have all these tools of how to deal with patients and yourself, the highs and lows doesn't become so extreme because if they did, you'd hurt yourself in this profession. But being a creative, getting hurt is part of the journey, I'd say, because it's those situations, for example, when you do something bad or you do something that you're not proud of or you do something that doesn't get the response that you were looking for, it is in those situations that something becomes incongruent and you have to think and you have to develop and you have to find new ways get over that little threshold and, and, and push forward and those are the moments that I've learned or at least started to learn to cherish the obstacles that makes me want to wake up and do things better I went to bed the other night thinking I won't be able to produce anything this week I'm too tired I don't have any creative energy and then I slept I woke up, I had an idea, and I said, okay, let's roll with it, let's try it. And if it sticks, it sticks. So finding your voice is a lot about experience. Experience gives you time to develop and develop this sort of congruence between your creative desires and the output. But it's also about letting yourself be incongruent at times. When you feel like you're at your creative low, that's okay too, because it means that something is happening. It means that something is off and that you have to find a way to get over that threshold. And that's a part of, of the creative process as well. Don't be disheartened if it's hard sometimes. And don't look at other creatives and say, it looks so easy. Because it's really never easy for anybody who's creative all the time. It can be easy at certain points. But most of the time, I think creatives struggle. They have to force themselves sometimes, they have to push themselves, they have to be able to have a bad day in order to be creative the next. So I'd like to end today's video with something that I've struggled with and that is actually releasing my music. So I've made a ton of tracks over this year and while not all great, I did want to end the year releasing some of them. So I've dropped I think eight new tracks to my band camp and I want to end off with playing you a song that I made called Reverence and I made a little collage to go along with it.
So this was my first video of 2019. I have a lot of stuff planned for the year. I hope you're with me. Let's do it. Thank you.